And welcome back to another video. And today we're reviewing Texas Chainsaw, or Texas Chainsaw 3D, or Texas Chainsaw 2013, or Texas Chainsaw, the film that had so many fuck ups in the script that it literally makes barely any sense nowadays. That's not a title, I'm just saying. Okay, as I mentioned, this film came out in 2013, and it's directed by John Lusenhop. I believe he did the movie Takers, which is a pretty cool movie. Uh, and it's written by Adam Marcus and Deborah Sullivan. And Steven Susco also did an earlier draft of the film. I don't know how much of that was used. I don't know if it was used at all. But he did an early draft of the film. But Adam Marcus's script, let me just, just say this off the bat. Adam Marcus's script was fucked. Because he made the script that Toby Hooper absolutely loved. And the studio or the producers fucked it up. They changed it. They modified it. And they made it into what the film wound up being. So it's like they took little bits and pieces and they're like, let's use that. That's a good idea. Let's use that. But let's change this up. Like, they use smartphones and the movie's supposed to be based in, like, the 90s. Or at least Adam Marcus' script was based in the 90s. I don't know what year they based this in because if you look at newspapers and stuff and dates on papers in this film, you'll notice that the dates are blurred out or they're completely absent. So it's like, it's clear that they fucked up. They had these props made for that year, 1993. And, or, yeah, you know, like, the 90s or 74, whatever the newspaper clippings were from, were from, they clearly blurred it out just so their film doesn't look stupid, which is, it makes it look dumber, because you blurred out the dates on a newspaper. Who the fuck does that? So overall, I feel like they realize their fuck-ups, and maybe at a certain point they're like, damn, we really fucked up here. Well, too late to go back now, let's just modify it. And then they had to do that shit, which makes it look really stupid, but... All that things aside, the script, all that stuff, this film was really good. It's a, it's, I would say it's one of the definitive Texas Chainsaw films, and I'll get a lot of shit for that because I know people have a huge problem with the script and the story. But again, you have to understand that that's not how this film was written. You know, Adam Marcus had a clear cut idea, and they knew what they were doing with this film. And then some producer, as far as the story goes, some producer came around and fucked it up for everybody so that's what happened so I can't, you can't really fault the film for that you gotta fault the person who fucked it up for us but I really love the film the mask is fucking amazing it's it's horrific I mean get a look at that it's like all wrinkled and withered and all oh god I just fucking love it it's one of the best masks now I will say that there's a couple of like the original set of masks that they were gonna go for are definitely really creepy but I'm still really happy that we got this version because I honestly prefer this mask. I love the way it looks. I don't care what anybody says. It just looks like it fits Leatherface perfect. And I'm all for it. Those other masks are really cool too though. So if, honestly if we would have got any of those too. I would have been awesome with those. But I really love this mask. Jesus. Dan Yeager's Leatherface. Fantastic. He's up there with Gunnar Hansen. Like neck and neck with Gunnar Hansen. And Andrew Bertiarski. And Mark Burnham. You know the guy from Texas Chainsaw 20, 2022. So, I really love the violence in this film. It's not, like, super over the top. I love this, the 3D aspect. It's not, like, forced all the time. Some of the things are kind of like, okay, did you really got to go there? But it's not so over the top where it takes you out of the film, I feel. So, I really like that they didn't force a whole bunch of 3D type shit. But some 3D things when I'm watching a 3D movie and I like some things that are not. And I feel like if you try to force things into 3D, it just comes off really weird. Like, why is he doing that? Is he just doing it just to get the 3D shot, or is he just doing it to be a fucking idiot? Because it doesn't make any sense. It'd be like sawing through a door, but coming at an angle that wouldn't make any sense, all because the camera's sitting right there. You know, I just don't... I don't dig that when I see 3D movies. If you're going to do 3D, make it do stuff that's going to be awesome. Like, there's a scene where a guy gets a hook to the back, and the blood splashes on the camera lens. I like that. You know, that works for me. I think that's awesome. But, like, if you had the hook coming at the camera... Even though, you know, it wouldn't make any sense for the camera to be staring at the hook. You know, that would piss me off. I just hate seeing that. But fortunately, there's not a whole lot of that in this film. And again, I think I mentioned Dan Yeager is one of the best leather faces. And the soundtrack in this film is really cool. Not really soundtrack, but score, I guess. By John Frizzle. It's amazing. I love it. And uh, I gotta say it, this is one of my favorite Texas Chainsaw films. It goes 
Texas Chainsaw, Texas Chainsaw 2022, Texas Chainsaw 2013. Top three right there. And I'll probably stick to that for forever because 2013 was actually my second until 2022 came out. But, yeah, that's my thoughts on Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2013 or Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D or Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the film with many t- titles. Uh, but, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And i got to give this film, I'm going to give this film a 9 out of 10 roaring chainsaws because despite the faults, I still feel this film is amazing. It's entertaining, it's exciting, it's thrilling, it's one of the best portrayals of Leatherface. Got a great soundtrack, I mean, the acting's kind of iffy here and there, but I feel like Heather's a great final girl, despite what people say about her. I really love her as the final girl girl for this film, and I like the whole story where she finds out she's a part of the Sawyer family, and she realizes her bloodline, and then she's like, stays around to help Jedediah. I love that. I think that's an awesome plotline. I wish we would have got a sequel. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. And by now, there's no chance we're going to get a sequel of this film. I mean, let's just face it, all hope is lost at this point. But, yeah, next we'll be talking about the prequel, Leatherface. Oh, boy. But, yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye! How does it feel when you're